Hi, welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner. I'm Tommy. This is a place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how we can get the best from this great hobby. In last week's video, we started to explore how using an external microphone with our smartphone can help us to get much better audio quality when we're recording ourselves play. This week, I'd like to start going into what I'm going to call audio engineering for idiots. I say for idiots because whilst audio engineering might sound like it's going to be complex, in actual fact, it's an awful lot simpler than you think. And if I can do it, I'm sure anybody can do it. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. production and audio production used to really be the exclusive domain of people who had access to extremely expensive equipment and probably more important had very finely honed skills that took years and years to develop. These days thanks to technology you can actually get some fairly amazing results without having expensive equipment without having to spend hours and hours, if not years and years, learning a skill and improving all of these things. It can be done quite simply with drag and drop. What we have to remember is that when we record at home, we don't generally have fantastic acoustics. There's no sound engineer helping us make sure everything's set up properly. There's just ourselves and our phone. Whilst the result we can get, as we saw last week, is certainly okay, it's probably not great, and there are ways that we can take it just that little bit further to vastly improve the quality that we get. This, of course, means that we're going to be moving into the audio production. So to enable us to do this, the first thing we're going to need to do now is actually capture the audio and the video separately. Now, I'll admit here that we are starting to stray into probably slightly more advanced things, but honestly, watch through to the end and you'll see that this is far from complicated and there are just a few very simple steps to follow in order to be able to do it. Of course, to be able to capture the audio and video separately, you are going to need two devices. If you don't have two yourself, for example, if you don't have a smartphone and a tablet, then I'm sure you'll be able to borrow a spare phone off one of your friends or family for an hour or so while you do a recording at home. Last week, we looked briefly at using the app to set up the audio, didn't we? But we didn't actually record using that app. We just used it to set the microphone up. What we're going to do this week is we're actually going to use the app, this Motive app, to do the audio recording itself. If you're an iPhone user, you could also use GarageBand just as easily to capture the audio recording on your phone. Another advantage of capturing the video and the audio separately is that you're able to position the microphone where it's going to pick up the sound best, whilst you can position the camera where it's going to give you the best video view. As I said, I'm using the Shure MV88 microphone, which is stereo. If you look closely at the mic itself, you'll see there's an L on one side and an R on the other, which relates to, of course, left and right. So when I thought about how to position the microphone, I simply position it so that the L is pointing towards the bass strings of the piano on my left hand, and the R is pointing towards the treble strings of the piano, so my right hand. So this means when I get playback using normal headphones, it's more like the effect you get as a player, in that your left ear is closer, obviously, to the left side of the piano, and your right ear is closer to the right side of the piano, so you get that slightly different balance between the two. I bought myself a really, really cheap tripod that I use, as you can see, to position the microphone. 
I have it in such a way that the microphone itself is just inside the piano lid. Now that we have this high quality audio file, all that remains is to do this famous post-processing that I talked about earlier. Now I know that this might start to be sounding quite technical, and indeed there have been books and books and books, if not libraries, written on the subject. However, all we're going to do here is apply a couple of very simple tweaks to the file to improve its quality. When we did our recording, we only of course had one microphone. So, okay, yes, it was a stereo microphone, but it was just one microphone. I don't know if you'd ever noticed, because in honesty, I'd never really noticed myself until I started to specifically look for it. But if you listen to any classical concert that's being recorded, you will be amazed at the number of microphones that are all over the place. There are microphones inside the piano, there are microphones near the piano, there are microphones hanging from the ceiling. Another example, if you look at a concert where there's a, a drum kit, you just look how many microphones there are pointed at the different parts of that drum kit. What we're going to do here is effectively try to get around the fact that we only had one microphone. And we're going to do that by applying what's known as reverb to the file that we've recorded. So what we're going to try to do electronically is to take the piano sound that we got from our practice room, from our lounge, wherever we recorded it, and modify it so that it sounds more like a piano that was played in a concert hall or in a church or in another large, luxurious room. I mentioned earlier that all professional recordings use a variety of microphones in various different placements. Yet even then, I can guarantee you that they will add reverberation to the combination of all of those microphones afterwards to get the sound just perfect. To add reverb to our audio file, what we need to use is a digital audio workstation or a DAW. If you're not familiar with these, and I'm sure most of you won't be, you're probably quite close to swiping right already and moving on to the next thing. But don't. Watch through and you'll see that in actual fact, this is much simpler than you might imagine. As you know, I'm a Mac user. And as a result, I get GarageBand for free. And yes, you guessed it, GarageBand is actually a digital audio workstation. If you're on Windows, there are other options that you've got that you can download, some free, some relatively inexpensive. They all provide the same basic functionality. You'll find that even these free home user applications like GarageBand are incredibly sophisticated pieces of software that enable you to do an amazing array of things. But for what we're going to do today, we're only going to do a few very simple operations, drag and drop, a few selections, in order to achieve a great effect on the file that we're using. So don't worry, you don't need to become an expert in digital audio workstations by any means. As an example, here's then how we would apply reverberation using GarageBand. The first thing we do is we create a project. We add a track. And then we import our audio file. Once we've done this, we can double click on the file that we've imported like this. And underneath, we'll have an option to select what they call plugins. Out of interest, a plugin really used to actually mean that it was a separate piece of equipment, so a separate box that you would need to plug in, literally plug in with wires to the other recording equipment that you had. Now, of course, it's all just done with software. No equipment's needed at all. We'll select the reverb plugin and let's choose platinum verb from the drop-down list that we've got available. 
Within this plugin, you'll then see there are lots of presets from which to choose. You simply click on the little arrow here that gives you the list. And you can see here things like a big room or church. All a preset does is basically it's a set of values that have been worked out by a professional audio engineer that will represent the kind of space that they describe here. So for piano recordings, I quite like the wooden verb. You just let your music play and you choose one after another to see which one you like the most. You can turn the plugin on and you can turn it off using the button here. And this helps you compare before and after. Once you're happy, all that's left to do is export the result to a file. To do this, we click Share in the menu, then Export Song to Disk. We select where we'd like to save the file, and then Job Done. have the time and probably more importantly the ears you can actually start to tweak all of the different settings that you get on these presets you'll note here that I've not mentioned any kind of computer skills required at all because they're not all you're really going to do is through the computer screen change some dials so that you can slightly alter the way the sound comes the real skill you need is in your ears. And if you've got good ears and if you're able to do it, then you can take reverb to a whole new level. I admit my ears I don't think are fantastic, so I basically stick with the plugin to keep it simple for me. All that's now left to do is to combine the audio and the video files together. To be able to do this, I prefer to use iMovie on my Mac rather than do it on my phone because it's just easier to control. And don't worry if you're not a Mac user, Windows has other programs that are the same. Movie Maker is a good example that you can use and it has the same functionality. And as you're about to see, it's not even slightly technical or complicated to be able to do this. So let's have a look inside iMovie. Again, we're going to create a project. We will import our audio and video files. We put them into the timeline, which is just like what we did when we imported the audio file into the track in GarageBand. We just then need to adjust the position of them so that they're in sync. And even this is simple. If you look carefully, you can see the wave pattern. So that is like the picture of the sound on the movie file. And you can also see the same wave pattern on the audio file. And this gives you a clue as to where the sound actually is and will help you to line the two up. To make this easier, notice this small zoom slider here. If you move this to the right, you'll find that fine tuning becomes a lot simpler when you move the audio file around to sync it with the video. All we then need to do is delete the audio from the original video file. So right click onto the video, select detach audio, and once it's detached, we just go in and we delete it. We do the same kind of topping and tailing we talked about when we were using iMovie on the phone, adding our titles and those things. One thing to be slightly careful of is that if you've done a long recording, so five or ten minutes, what you might find is that by the end of the movie, the audio and the video will have got slightly out of sync, even if you perfectly sync them up at the beginning. This is really simple to fix. All we're going to do is make the speed editor visible to us. Once we've done that, 
we can simply move this little dot to the left or to the right, depending where the synchronization problem is, until the two line up perfectly at the end. And that will ensure then that from beginning to end, your audio and your video are perfectly in sync. Then we export the results. Here it's called share, but it's exactly the same thing. And we have a perfectly produced movie with reverberation added to our audio. I hope you found this video interesting and it's given you yet more ideas of how you can share your love of piano with your friends and family. In next week's video, I'm gonna show you another audio technique that you can use that's just as simple to apply as the one we've used today, and that's called equalization. If you're not already, do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, and then click on the notification bell so that you're notified when the next videos are released. Finally, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.